The question on page 63 asks you to combine a lot of information we've been talking about recently. So recall that on early Earth, there was no water, or not much. And we suspect that comets brought the water during a period of time when the solar system was being bombarded by debris from its formation. During this time, after water is brought by comets, there is an abundance of small organic molecules. Volcanic activity and weathering bring energy, ions, and more molecules to this primordial soup, which is the early ocean. Sun and lightning supply additional energy. So, in this primordial soup, there's molecules in solution, and we can imagine that more stable organic molecules are going to accumulate over time because the reactions will drive the molecules to combine into new molecules, and if they're more stable, they'll stay around longer. In a sense, surviving. Eventually, the creation of phospholipids will cause spontaneous bilayer formation. But more important than that, eventually an organic molecule must have evolved that had the ability to catalyze its own creation from the organic molecules around it. This would be a replicator, like an RNA or some kind of a protein. Once a replicator arrives on the chemical scene, then the population of molecules will change into one that has abundant replicators quite quickly, we can imagine, because they'll survive and reproduce more often, and the population of molecules will change over time. Once a lipid bilayer spontaneously forms around organic molecules and replicators, we have a protobiont, or probiont, which is basically a thing like a cell where a lipid bilayer surrounds organic molecules and replicators, but it's not actually alive yet, not like a prokaryote. It doesn't have the same kind of replicator, it doesn't have DNA, and it's not doing a lot of the properties of life yet, though it has some of them. So a protobiont or probiont is a group of organic molecules, ions, and replicators surrounded by a lipid bilayer. It's the theoretical ancestor to the first prokaryote, probably some kind of bacteria, and it exhibits some of the properties of life, though it's not alive. Prokaryotes are single-celled living organisms without organelles or a nucleus. They exhibit all of the properties of life. So let's list the similarities and differences here. So, a probiont has a lipid bilayer, as does a prokaryote. Both probionts and prokaryotes have replicators, though the probiont replicator was some protein or an RNA. We have no idea which. And the prokaryote replicator is a DNA replicator. Now, when we think of the properties of life, which we have the monogram herp bring to help us remember, um, we realize that prokaryotes have all the properties of life. I mean, they're living things. Probionts, or protobionts, however, have only some of the properties of life. The rest are absent. But we can imagine a probiont obtaining, chemically, one of the properties of life. And then we can imagine that it would survive to reproduce more often and be able to sort of change the population of probionts around it into more like itself. If it got all of the properties of life and survived to reproduce more often, then the population of probionts would eventually change into a population of prokaryotes over time, and we would have the evolution of the first prokaryote on planet Earth.